Hello, this is the 2020 introduction to thermal imaging radar and the thermal imaging radar product line. My name is Mike Petty and I'm going to be doing the webinar for you today. First of all, I would like to tell you that thermal radar and the thermal radar Hydra are the most advanced commercial and industrial solutions in the market for wide area intrusion detection. Thermal radar provides real-time continuous 360 degree situational awareness of any physical incursion that may threaten your perimeter. Intrusion detection is the most critical step of securing a border of any kind and perimeter detection must be highly effective and cost efficient. I would like to point out as we begin the webinar also that Thermal Radar has received a lot of global recognition for the product line that we carry, Thermal Radar and the Thermal Radar Hydra. In 2013, you can see that we won the ASIS Accolades Award, followed up in 2014 by Popular Science Magazine's Award for Best Security Invention, again at ISC West in 2014 for Best Imaging Product, and then in Utah, we won the Utah Innovations Award. We came back to ISC West in 2017, winning the best imaging product once again, but this time for the Thermal Radar Hydra product. And also at that same show, we won the Judge's Choice Award for best in show for the Hydra. We're going to spend a quick moment on Thermal Imaging 101. Thermal imaging cameras and sensors have been deployed for decades and have been highly effective in military, law enforcement, and security applications. They're effective because they see very well in darkness. Thermal imagers can receive the heat from objects in a field of view in kind of a grayscale, which is a visual representation of the heat in the profile of the scene. There's a variety of factors that impact the size and distance and coverage area of a thermal image, but thermal imaging is the gold standard for seeing in the dark. One of the best ways I've found to show people how thermal imaging works is to use this uh, picture, if you will. This is a picture of President Abraham Lincoln that's been digitized. You can see on the far left a black and white representation of President Lincoln. We then take each one of the pixels in that pixelized image and we assign the pixel a number based on the heat that is in that field of view. Thermal uh, emissivity uses about 256 varying shades of gray from the whitest white for the hottest to the blackest black for the coldest. And when we bring all of those numbers together, we can then follow certain algorithms that are looking for pixel change. This is how thermal imaging and advanced analytics work with a thermal imaging sensor. I like to point out in these presentations that thermal radar did not reinvent thermal imaging. Thermal imaging has been around for decades and has been used by military and law enforcement, security and other industrial professions. Thermal radar, however, utilizes the thermal sensor, in this case a FLIR Tau-2 sensor, and maximizes the capabilities of that sensor by rotating it to varying fields of view so as to cover a full 360 degrees very quickly. I'm going to play the video now so you can see the rotation of a thermal radar. The thermal radar unit was rotating the sensor very quickly. This was our 9 millimeter sensor, and it takes our 9 millimeter sensor one second to do a full rotation covering six fields of view so as to cover a full 360 degrees for detection. Thermal radar utilizes five different sensors depending on the distance that needs to be detected. Uh, the closer the objects, the wider the field of view, the fewer stops we have. The further out we're trying to detect, the more narrow the field of view, and we need more stops to accomplish a 360 degree area. So we have sensors that will stop between 6 and 16 times depending on the specific application we're trying to accomplish. In the previous video, we were showing you the real-time speed of a thermal radar as it rotates. I'd like to show you the slow-motion look of what thermal radar is actually doing when it rotates. 
in this video you'll notice that we're actually bringing the thermal sensor to a complete stop in each field of view. This is so that we can take a very crisp and clear image so that proper analytics can be done to gather the information we need to get. So as I explained with the previous videos, this is the way that we at Thermal Radar see the world. We see the world in stops or stations. So as the thermal sensor is rotated from each stop or station to complete a full 360 degrees, we're able to take a specific image for each field of view or what we would call a stop or station. When we take an image of stop number seven and in one second we come around and take another image of stop number seven, the thermal radar is going to analyze the previous image with the current image and we're looking for any pixel disruption or pixel change based on the numbers that we see from the image. If we see that there are 20 pixels or 10 pixels or 100 pixels that have changed in their heat from one second ago until now, then that triggers an alarm based on the analytics of a thermal radar. What thermal radar is looking for, as I talked about a moment ago, is pixel disruption. You'll notice in the image, the thermal image over to the left, that we are detecting a person moving into some bushes. You can see the person's head and their torso and their legs as they're moving through the bushes. That's what thermal radar analytics are looking for. We're comparing what we saw one moment ago with what we see now, and we can detect that there is something there now that was not there in a previous rotation of the thermal radar. Once we have that person detected out there in the bushes, the thermal radar is able to calculate the distance from where it's located to the target that it's detected and we're able to display that on a map of the property. So when you set up the thermal radar you're going to import a map of the property so that thermal radar ostensibly becomes a geospatial alert and tracking mechanism based on an analytic alert from the thermal sensor. A single thermal radar can cover up to 150 football fields every two seconds. That's how much area a thermal radar is capable of scanning to detect if something has happened or something has changed in the 360 degree field of view. You'll notice in these two pictures, the top one showing a wide field of view from a thermal radar, the bottom one showing the same field of view, but with one notable exception, that the analytics have been turned on to detect a person standing on the corner of a building. You'll notice the person is actually there in both pictures, but in the bottom picture, thermal radar analytics were detecting that person moving around and standing near the corner. This is what thermal imaging and thermal analytics will do. Whether it's daytime or nighttime, we're looking for unique changes in pixels in a field of view, and in our case, a field of view is a full 360 degrees. This slide is a great example of the coverage area and capability of what a thermal radar or thermal radar hydra can do for a customer. In this case, they've mounted a thermal radar hydra on the corner of a building, and that building and that property is used by a city to store maintenance equipment, uh, snow plows and trucks and tires and other forms of equipment that they use to maintain the city. The area is pretty significant from the point where you see the thermal radar here on the corner of the building out to the outer edge of the large detection circle. You're about 300 meters or 300 yards out to that area. So it's a very long, wide area that we're able to detect and cover all of the property from a single point on the corner of the building. Most notably here though is that they already had the wiring and the power to the corner of the building for an existing pan tilt zoom camera. So truly they had to run one extra Cat5 cable to that location all the power was there, both of the units, the thermal radar and the PTZ, are PoE injected and they didn't have to have significant changes for the infrastructure of the property which saved them a lot of money. I put this slide into the presentation 
to show the coverage area of a thermal radar. This is the Pentagon of the United States. Now we do not have a thermal radar in the center of the Pentagon, but many people know the size and the uh, mass of the Pentagon. It's a very large property. However, if you put a thermal radar right there in the courtyard in the middle, the red circle surrounding the Pentagon would be your detection area for a thermal radar when you're looking for a human detection. So uh, thermal radar is capable in the very best case scenario to detect a human at up to 500 meters in every direction. So this is the equivalent, if you will, of about 150 football fields that we scan every two seconds as the thermal radar makes the rotation of a full 360 degrees. This picture gives you an idea of the scope and capability of our area of detection. This slide shows the thermal radar sensors that can be used within a thermal radar unit. We utilize five separate sensors. Uh, you can see the 9mm is a 640 by 512 resolution. We have two units that are 13mm, but one is a lower resolution, one is the higher resolution. And then we have our 19 and 25 units, respectively, that are in high resolution, 640 by 512. There's a varying degree of factors that you look at when you're selecting the sensor. One of those factors is the vertical field of view. While thermal radar has a 360 degree horizontal field of view, the vertical field of view for some customers is pertinent and something that they want to look at. The different sensors are used to detect objects at varying distances. So if I have a site that's not a very large property, I might want to go with a 9 millimeter thermal radar because my vertical field of view is pretty significant and I don't need a lot of distance. If I have a very large property and I want to see far out, uh, three, four, five hundred meters away, then I would want to use my 19 or my 25 millimeter thermal radar. This slide represents a fantastic advance that we made a few years ago by pairing a thermal radar with a pan tilt zoom camera. We call this product the Hydra. The Hydra has a thermal radar on the top and a pan tilt zoom directly below it. The PTZ can be used by any PTZ manufacturer. So we can have a Bosch in there, we can have a Vicon, we can have an Axis camera. Any kind of PTZ, for the most part, will integrate with a thermal radar. Thermal radar then drives and commands the PTZ to go look at detections that thermal radar is seeing. So let's say it's nighttime, thermal radar detects a person walking in an area where they should not be. It's a vulnerable or an exposed area that is under surveillance. When thermal radar detects that person moving, then we move the PTZ directly to that heading and zoom in so that we can see the forensics on the person. So this is about detecting an object and then slewing the PTZ to the target. Let's take a moment and talk about the wiring diagram and the data movement of a thermal radar and a thermal radar hydra. Thermal radar is a PoE injected unit. Uh, uses very low power. It's only six watts of power to do the rotations, the computations, the analytics, everything that happens in the thermal radar. Thermal radar, however, only produces images, thermal images, and does not produce a video stream. So because of that, thermal radar has a device that we call the TRIA. The TRIA is a network device. It almost acts like a smart encoder to take all of the thermal radar imagery and lay it out in a way that is an on-vif stream into a video management system. The PTZ camera is typically on-vif compliant and it also is a PoE injected video stream uh, for the PTZ camera. So thermal radar and the PTZ in general for most of the applications we do are both PoE injected. All of that flows into a video management system. We utilize varying video management systems like Genetech or Valeris or Milestone or Axonsoft or many other video management systems that are on the market today. 
In the previous slide, we talked about the TRIA, the Thermal Radar Integration Appliance. As the thermal radar unit rotates from station to station and produces images, all of those images are forwarded into the TRIA so that an ONVIF stream can be developed from the TRIA into a video management network. If you look at this image, this is the TRIA feed that is continuously updated uh, with all of the images from thermal radar. So in the very top, you see 180 degrees of thermal across the top, and you see 180 degrees of thermal across the bottom. Each one of those stations is continuously updated as the thermal radar sends new images into the TRIA. So everything you see here acts almost like a camera feed into a video management system where you're able to see the map of the property, the alarm window in the center, and the full 360 degree coverage area of a thermal radar. Let's watch for a moment this video. This is a Milestone VMS platform. On the upper left corner you see the thermal radar uh, TRIA feed and then also the PTZ feed next to it. The thermal radar is detecting a person moving right now and the PTZ has slewed to the target, the person walking over behind the bush. Keep in mind as that person moves, every time you see the PTZ camera make any type of movement, it's because it's taking a command from thermal radar. Thermal radar tells the PTZ, move to the right, move to the left. Now you're seeing the thermal radar detecting new entries into the zone, and the thermal sensor is telling the PTZ, go look over here. So as you see these people and the truck and various movements on the property, the PTZ will continue to follow that movement throughout the property based on the pixel disruption thermal radar is seeing. Again, keeping in mind, every time you see the PTZ camera move, it's because thermal radar is sending it a command. On the bottom of the video feed, you'll see a list of all of the alarms being generated by a thermal radar and an alarm playback in the bottom. By now in the presentation, you've definitely seen the capabilities of thermal radar, all of the things it can do, but what are the more practical applications and the value proposition of a thermal radar and thermal radar hydra unit. This picture is showing a large property. It's got uh, stables, there's a racetrack, there's parking areas. It's a very large property and if you had to put thermal cameras throughout a property like this um, to watch every part of the property and then saturate it with both thermal and PTZ cameras, you might have a drawing that looks something like this. The unique part of this, though, is that the costs of a solution like this are significant. If you were going to have fixed thermal cameras throughout this property, as well as PTZs that could respond to it, you'd be talking about using 22 fixed thermal cameras for intrusion detection. Then you'd have to talk about the eight PTZs that are out on the property to do some of the forensics. But the infrastructure improvements for the property are incredibly significant because of the number of of cameras and devices and wire and trenching that you might have to do on a project like this. A traditional detection and surveillance solution on the property that I showed might come in at around $400,000 or a little below that. A thermal radar view of something like this is quite different. By using the thermal radar Hydra, thermal radar is needing only three cameras on the property and those three cameras require very little infrastructure improvement. So moving three thermal radars around to very specific parts of the property, you're able to see the entire property and have the saturation you're looking for, but you're only utilizing three devices. This is what the property would look like if we utilized three thermal radar units that were used with corner mount brackets to cover the entire property. This is the effectiveness and the value proposition of thermal radar. When all is said and done, the value that we bring is incredible because of the amount of infrastructure improvement costs that long-range devices like a thermal radar can mitigate. By now, you've been able to see a lot of the benefits of thermal radar through this presentation. Let me highlight a couple of them, though, in this list. Number one, thermal radar immediately identifies threats into vulnerable areas. We have a setup 
program that allows you to select certain areas of your property that you want to have detections in, while others you don't need the detection. So it's very specific to areas of concern. We also have the ability to mask off areas and say, I don't want any detections over in this area. So we have a really robust way of setting up your detection zone so that you get really great alarms. One of the other great things is that thermal radar can directly help your video management system move other pan tilt zoom cameras to the right position. So when thermal radar detects an intruder in the northwest corner of your property and there are three other pan tilt zoom cameras already there, then the video management system can move those cameras to a preset location, giving you not just one camera system, but four or five camera systems watching the intrusion area and that's all directed by thermal radar. One of the other wonderful things that thermal radar can do is diminish the number of false alarms that occur. We do this in our setup program with very sophisticated algorithms and rules to determine what kind of alarms you get. It's not enough to just say, okay, we had a thermal detection alarm, generate the alarm into the video management system. Thermal radar then says, you know what, let's do three alarms in a row before before we generate the alarm into the alert system. By doing this, it makes it so that you have to have triple or quadruple confirmation that something has occurred, and we're only talking six to eight seconds before you have four times confirmation that something is in the zone that you're concerned about. So those are just some of the benefits. You can read through some of the others here, but thermal radar brings a power to surveillance and targeted surveillance that no other solution in the marketplace can do. We simply have the greatest wide area intrusion detection system in the market. We're going to finish the presentation today by focusing on a few of the deployment solutions that we have, uh, meaning how do you mount thermal radar, in what way do you deploy a unit on a property. If you look to the left side of the property, this is a customer of ours that has mounted a unit high above their property. Uh, this property is about 200 meters in radius, and so they deployed a unit at the very top on the pole so that one unit would cover the entire property and see every intrusion zone that they would need to watch for. In the middle section, you've got a customer that has pole mounted a unit and it's watching a very specific area. Uh, in this case, it's not a full 360 degrees because the pole is going to provide some blockage to the, uh, to the thermal radar, but it's going to have a very significant field of view. The one on the far right is a unit that's a gooseneck mount bracket uh, to a pole that they already had installed. They already had network at this pole, and it made for a very simple and easy uh, placement of this device. Uh, this particular unit has 360 degrees of thermal. The PTZ is going to have a very small blockage area by the small gooseneck uh, obstruction. But other than that, the pole and the bracket present a very easy way to deploy thermal radar and a thermal radar hydra solution. The thermal radar hydra can also be deployed in an autonomous solution like the mobile sentry trailer that you see here. The mobile sentry trailer is unique to thermal radar. We manufacture and wire this trailer to provide customers with a rapid deployment solution or a solution where they do not have any infrastructure for power or network or things like that. This trailer comes with the video management system, with the 4G modem, point-to-point -point antennas, whatever is needed so that you can put this trailer down in an area and remotely monitor the area with alarms being generated or continuously with a video feed depending on the application. This trailer is a fantastic way to have a sensory outpost, if you will, watching an area that is critical and needs that kind or that level of surveillance. We at Thermal Imaging Radar would like to thank all of our customers and all of you who have listened to this presentation. We are hopeful that you will continue to see the value Thermal Radar can bring to your security operation. Thermal Radar is a solution for wide area intrusion detection. We can be a standalone detection outpost or we can be the centerpiece of your integrated physical security strategy. Please keep us in mind and 
please let us know if we can support you or help you in any way. You can go to our website at www.thermalradar.com or you can reach us at sales at thermalradar.com by email. We wish you all the best and a happy 2020.